Welcome to Markets Insight. Stay with us for a quick canter around the big issues dominating financial markets. We'll be asking whether the European Central Bank is running out of ammunition to fight the Eurozone debt crisis, if Spain is heading towards a full international rescue, and if China is about to suffer a hard landing. With me are Stephen King, Group Chief Economist at HSBC, and George Magnus, Senior Economic Advisor at UBS. Stephen, I'll come to you first. The big question everyone is asking is, has the European Central Bank run out of tools to, to fight this debt crisis? We saw um, last week, in fact, the, the main refinancing rate, the interest rate across the Eurozone, mm. cut to a record low of 0.75%. Do you feel that's going to be enough? No. Um, the simple answer is that the Eurozone is still incredibly weak. Um, there are all sorts of fault lines still within the Eurozone, um, and I think the pressure will be on the European Central Bank at some point to do more in one form or another, uh, whether it's rate cuts or whether it's uh, uh, some version, a legal version of quantitative easing that could be allowed for uh, within the Eurozone. The trickier thing is, will these policies actually work? And there's an interesting comparison here between what's going on in the Eurozone and what's been going on in the UK. Um, the UK has delivered all sorts of weird and mm -hmm. wonderful policies and yet the economic outcome so far has been frankly very disappointing. So the difficulty is not so much can you do additional things in terms of monetary policy, but rather will those additional things actually work when you have a huge debt crisis? And that's been the problem, I think, both affecting the Eurozone and the UK. George, w would you agree with that? Or do you think there's more perhaps in the ECB toolbox we could sort of deploy before we sort of uh, pronounce judgment on it? Right now? Yeah, I think, I think it's right to be <clears throat> somewhat sceptical about what it is that we think the European Central Bank or other central banks, as Stephen suggested, actually can realistically achieve with uh, quantitative easing policies. But of course, when you ask the question, you know, does the, has the ECB run out of tools? The answer is no, it's just chosen not to use them so far. So bond buying, for example. Uh, specifically bond buying. So there's no question, obviously, the ECB has uh, clearly you know, presented itself as the lender of last resort par excellence to Eurozone banks which also, of course, has unintended consequences, but they ended the funding crisis very, very successfully with the long-term repurchase agreements. Mm -hmm. um, but I think um, there is a, a very strong case, in my view, for the ECB to uh, effectively you know, buy bonds. In, in some ways, if uh, hopefully we can have a chart of Spanish bond deals, uh, quite noticeable, really, yeah. during the course of 2011, in the middle there, where we did get the first ECB bond buying of, of peripheral debt. The, the borrowing costs for Spain fell from these rather high levels, came right down. But now, look here, July 2012, we're back up at near Euro era highs of 7% plus. Um, ECB aside, you know, why is that happening, Stephen? What are the markets telling us? Well, part of the problem is this uncertainty about whether Europe can move towards some kind of fiscal and political union. Uh, without that, you've got persistent sovereign risk, and that's reflected particularly in countries like Spain. The second factor for Spain specifically, of course, is that the economy has been uh, extremely weak. A year or a year and a half ago, people were predicting that maybe Spain might have turned the corner by this stage, uh, that that cyclical recovery that would be coming through uh, would improve revenues, reduce social expenditures and so on, and naturally, therefore, the budget deficit would begin to come down and the debt position would stabilise. What we have instead is a persistently weak economy, uh, creating bigger problems for the banks, bigger concerns about the cost to the government of bailing out the banks, et cetera, et cetera. What is it that EU leaders aren't doing? And you know, can Spain fund itself, at, for example, with short-term bills at lower interest rates if, if, if EU leaders can't deliver what's required? Well, for a, for a while, possibly. But I think you know, if you think about what Spain, what the Spanish sovereign has to raise probably this year, 2013, 2014, somewhere close to 300 billion euros. That's the deficits, assuming they come in on target. Uh, plus the, the rollovers of uh, maturing debt. Um, and I think if, if the conditions, the, the borrowing conditions of i.e. these kinds of interest rates and obviously the shrinkage in the investor universe uh, that actually wants to acquire Spanish sovereign risk and of course the Spanish banks are kind of chock-a-block with Spanish debt anyway, um, I, I actually can't see how Spain can actually make it uh, in terms of self-financing. So. I think they will need to have a sovereign package. There's one other thing I want to ask you, which is, um, of course, the ECB is not the only central bank that's been cutting interest rates. China um, has delivered two successive interest rate cuts in two months, and um, the Shanghai Composite Index, the, the main index of sort of Chinese equities, uh, tells us its own story there. There's not a lot of confidence among domestic Chinese investors in, in the Chinese economy. We're now at sort of six-month lows there. Um, 
Are we seeing a cleverly engineered strategy to deflate the Chinese property bubble here in China, or is Beijing now desperately trying to avert a nosedive with these rate cuts, Stephen? What do you think? Well, it's pretty clear that they were trying to engineer the sort of soft landing for the property market. The property market has been probably a lot weaker than they had expected. Mm. Um, and the fault lines have now started to come through for the more broader economy. There's no doubt that the economy has slowed down significantly in the first half of this year. The PMI surveys and others have all been consistent with that significant slowdown. The question now is, having tightened policy aggressively over the last couple of years, is there sufficient room and time left to loosen policy aggressively uh, to create the kind of soft landing that China would like to see? This time around, much more dependent on the monetary stimulus that's going to come through over the course of the next few months. There's plenty of room to manoeuvre, which is very different from Europe, mm -hmm. but uh, whether it will actually work, that's a slightly more debatable point currently. Given these risks, George, how should we position ourselves, do you think, in asset markets right now? Do we hide in, in bonds, or is there a case really to sort of go for more high-yielding high instruments, say, you know, junk debt, that sort of thing? What do you think? Uh, well, there's, there's obviously nothing terribly uh, wonderful about, you know, certainly sovereign bonds, government bonds, that's mm. very commendable and just given very, very low rates of interest. At the same time, uh, for example, if you were looking at this chart of Chinese equities, uh, this level of the, China, of the Shanghai Composite is at one-third of where it was about um, four or five years ago. So uh, I think the, the problem is that, that, as Stephen said before, you know, about the Bank of England and the European Central Bank, it's almost like kind of pushing against a, this proverbial piece of string. You don't really know that the central banks can achieve very much. And I actually don't think the People's Bank of China is going to achieve very much with these interest rate cuts either. The problem is, you know, we, West and East, you know, we are in a global slowdown. And I think that stock markets, they're always going to be good companies, but I think stock markets in general, I think, are going to remain pretty much under pressure for a while. Great. Well, thank you very much to you both. For more on that, go to www.ft.com forward slash markets.